All right. So uh, I hope you're gaining something out of this. Any thoughts? Any comments? Some. I mean, I didn't stop to ask all of you because uh, uh, you know, uh, don't want to interrupt. I know that particularly this class, you just prefer to listen to the whole thing at a stretch. Uh, so yeah. Any anything that you want to share before I go further? Are you able to understand it? And then again, is it too slow, too fast? If I can get some feedback, that will be helpful. Okay, Kanan. If not Dave or Kiran, Thomas. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say a little bit as a hope in God and uh, how the as a uh, believers, how the believers have that hope without seeing the card and uh, and and something the vis unvis vis invisible. So the hope is there, and uh, without seeing, we are like a believing card is is a big thing, and 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 also the righteousness. Uh, how the believers is like leading by the his spirit and his presence that is a living um, thank you yeah thank you kiran thank you for sharing about uh, the hope that we have in in christ uh, and you know that's being brought out by peter quite well so thank you for sharing that any other any other observations by the others Dev, anything you want to add? Okay, all right. So we'll just uh, proceed then. And uh, I'll try and cover more ground. And if you have any comments, then please do... Uh, you know, stop me in between. That should be okay. All right. So then I'll just continue. So yeah, I was uh, telling us that the believers are so blessed. Um, and uh, both, the, uh, I mean, all three, uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit have uh, done a work in harmony to um, save the believer, sanctify the believer, give the believer an inheritance. And so uh, we should not be overtaken uh, by the earthly struggles. Instead, keep our focus on God. And um, uh, another thing that he is telling the believers, Peter, in this case, he's saying that we should be very careful with the way we think so our minds he says be sober okay and uh, uh, our thinking should be completely resting on hope okay god's hope uh, and we must remember that we are also called to be holy because god is holy all right so uh, as 
a people as a people and these are the gentile believers so they had a different way of living before they became um, before they accepted uh, the sacrifice of jesus so they were living in lusts they were living in um, ignorance those are things that peter is saying no longer correct to uh, continue that way instead uh, have a holy life you are set apart for god now you are god's people so live like god's people then again he is helping them understand about the precious work that the lord jesus has done so he says you have not been redeemed with corruptible things so you see uh like even as i'm sharing with you i don't know whether i i'm really able to add um uh, you know or explain the 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 glory of god the way it is uh that it is so um you know like how do i put it it's it's really uh, a great work which god has done the more even we may not have the language to explain it fully but that's the greatness of his work from every angle you see that the believer is uh, justified the believer has an inheritance um, and uh, jesus has done this work with great excellence okay so how did he redeem the believer not with corruptible things or in other words uh, things that perish so notice even the the investment or the uh, redemption price which was given that was also precious the in inheritance that came out of it is also incorruptible right undefiled it will uh, it will not be uh, it will last okay so everything about the kingdom is like this it's holy it's incorruptible so the people were redeemed through something incorruptible what is that that is the precious blood of jesus christ so that is the price that was given for us now god did not pay with uh, the blood of or even he uses things like silver and gold okay silver and gold we might think that that is precious enough but for god there was something more valuable and that is the precious blood of jesus so he says that uh, through that you have been redeemed and what have you been redeemed from very specifically here in verse 18 he says aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers so that means that the uh, blood of jesus and a sacrifice it has the power to break the hold of sinful traditions that have been passed down through generations for example you know we could say that uh, as a believer uh, you know the family of the believer uh, all their ancestors and all they had a problem with anger or they had a problem with lust or they had a problem with uh, something else you know maybe corruption money the way they were dealing with money so this is all aimless conduct but when the when a person accepts christ and they come into the kingdom of god now they don't have to worry that these traditional generational uh, sins will follow them because here the bible says that the precious blood of jesus has broken that connection okay so i can claim it we can claim it and we can say yeah you know our forefathers were like this they did uh, evil in the sight of god but i won't do it because i have been set free by the incorruptible precious blood of christ so uh, that has broken any connection that i have with aimless conduct aimless conduct okay so that's the confidence which we have uh and again you know there's a reminder that the sacrifice of jesus was not something that uh god thought of when adam and eve sinned oh now they have sinned now i have to come up with a solution but you see god is a god who is very well prepared well planned well thought out so we are told he had foreordained before the foundation of the world 
foreordained before the foundation of the world um, that Jesus will come, Jesus will redeem. And that was done, you know, manifest in these last times. So God had already thought it out. But at the right time, Jesus Christ came. And um, when we believe, when we believe in him, we receive salvation. Okay, so that is the, um, that that is what God has done for the believer. So it is through the Lord Jesus that we experience this salvation. Now moving on, verse 25. You know, he uh, says that our souls are purified in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren. So basically he's also talking about, just now he said, uh, have a holy life or a set apart life. Now he is... Uh, also telling them that they need to have a life of obedience. Okay? They need to have a life of obedience before God uh, and have sincere love for the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again. Again, he says, not by corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So uh, another thing that, God has put into our lives is the word of God. Okay. And the word of God is what will, it has already worked in us and it will continue to work forever. Okay. It abides, it lives and abides forever. So we have been born again through what? We just saw, we saw about the uh, incorruptible blood of Jesus. We also are now seeing about the incorruptible word of God. So when you think about the, uh, the ingredients that God has used, or in other words, you know, if you look at a building and if it is a, uh, it's a very uh, important and a precious building, you, know, you would find that the material that goes into making that is precious. So when we think about the kingdom of God, the work of salvation, you know, God has invested his best is what we can say. He shed his own blood. And now, you know, his incorruptible seed he has given, which is the word of God. So, you know, he has built this kingdom with eternal things to get eternal results. And that is the kind of a precious kingdom which he has given us. And we see here the importance of the word of God. We were born again by it. Having been born again, not of incorruptible seed, but not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because then, you know, he quotes from the Old Testament and uh, uh, there is a passage here. It says, all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So basically what he's saying is uh, that uh, uh, the things in this world, it's not going to remain. But what will what will remain as eternal is the word of God. So believer, there is so much for us to be confident about. There is so much for us to um, be certain about and, you know, stable in uh, and hold on to these things. Remember that this world is not uh, going to last forever. And so don't let the things of this world uh, sway you. Okay, so so he is sharing these eternal truths with the believers, and then later on he will go to uh, uh, explaining to the believer what kind of a uh, lifestyle they need to have. See, one thing is to know the truth. The second thing is to live out the truth. So uh, that is how you know Peter is going to uh, go go through this this letter of his so initially he's just helping the believer remember the preciousness of uh, the work of salvation and what has happened and the uh, the uh, investment god has made all that so the the believer understands that you know this this is all about eternal life okay and uh, 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 and then you know he reminds them that you are not a people like before 
something different has happened to you so when you live in the world your response to the authorities your response to uh, others has to be in line with salvation <coughs> so let's continue for some more a part of uh, chapter 2 he will you know talk about all these these uh, precious things such as the word of god and you know the identity of the believer so at the beginning of uh, chapter 2 he says now that you have understood about you know it, uh, it the uh, the preciousness of what god has done uh, therefore so whenever there is a word therefore you have to read the previous section so because of all this you lay aside laying aside all malice all deceit hypocrisy envy and all evil speaking so basically he is saying when we know what kind of salvation we have you know can we still continue to live a worldly life can we still continue to live a life filled with the works of the flesh so he puts down here there is a list isn't it he says uh, malice okay uh, hypocrisy envy evil speaking so all these things are about an evil heart or the works of the flesh how can we walk in the flesh but we should walk in the spirit okay, so he says please don't continue with an evil lifestyle instead he says as newborn babes what do uh, newborn uh, babies want they want milk that's what they always want so he says desire the pure milk so the word desire here which has been used in the greek you know it is uh, similar to the word which you see in psalm 42 verse 1 where the psalmist writes as the deer pants so there is a deep longing or a desire for the word of god so he says that should be the attitude of a true believer you know we are very excited and we are longing for he says pure milk of the word so he compares the the word like pure milk the way babies desire milk we should desire the word of god so we can check our own hearts and see do i desire god's word like that or is god's word um, you know sometimes would any baby be okay if the mother decides okay today i'm not going to feed the baby i'll feed the baby tomorrow you know no baby will be okay with that because every few hours you have to give the milk that is the only a uh, thing that the baby is depending on and so in the same way as believers if we uh, don't have that kind of dependence on god's word you know something if suppose a baby is not drinking milk you know, we would come to the conclusion that oh something is not okay with the baby why what is happening you know is the child sick so similarly spiritually if we don't have a desire like that you know we can check ourselves and see you know am i sick am i spiritually sick uh, because uh, i don't have that longing for god's word so he is encouraging the believers you know now that you've understood uh, how precious the salvation is why can't you desire the word of god like little babies okay and uh, their need for milk and another thing he says here he says that you may grow so when you desire the milk pure milk of the word that you may grow another thing we understand is that if i want to experience spiritual growth then i should nourish myself with the word of god now is it possible for a believer to just live the christian life not read their bible not try to understand god's word and still be spiritually strong no it's not possible because the strength of the spirit man comes from the word of god so growth comes from there maturity comes from there so if i don't take time in god's word there is no way that i would uh, experience growth so he is telling these gentile believers come on you know you have to grow up for that you need a desire for the word of god 
okay uh, and you know that you know god is a good god if you've understood all these things about salvation please don't live like before in fleshly things but live a holy life now he continues now he says uh when you look at the lord jesus you know he is that stone which men rejected there is a reference in the old testament to that so he says rejected indeed by men but chosen by god and precious so the lord jesus is like that if you look at his life uh, people did not mm, think much about him uh, you know he was not a, a like in the earthly terms he was not a king god he was not a rich person or he was not a, a so called accomplished person uh, as per you know people in the world but we know that god had a very special plan for the lord jesus so he says the lord jesus was rejected by men but chosen by god and similarly you know, he he is like that precious chosen stone uh, live you two are living stones okay and uh, what does god use to build his building how are buildings built you use bricks you use stones so the kingdom of god the house of god how has god chosen to build it he also uses stones and what are those stones they are living in other words the people of god are the construction material of his house and he says he's building a spiritual house he's building a spiritual kingdom filled with god's people they are living stones that's why the term living stones because god is not building uh a, you know a non living entity but his kingdom is very much a living entity and there are people who are like stones in the kingdom of god and uh, he says more uh, descriptions of of what god is building you know so he says that god is building a spiritual house a holy priesthood a holy priesthood means now these gentiles they would have thought um, we are not jews we have nothing to do with the traditions of the jews and so somewhere you know we are lacking as uh, believers in Christ Jesus uh, we don't we don't have that kind of an inheritance which the jews have but he's helping the believers know see what has happened to you now you focus on it because god has now made you a holy priesthood even though part of your ancestors you did not have priests who went and stood in the temple through the spiritual work that god has done in jesus christ you are now a royal priesthood okay so we can say the same thing about ourselves now we are not um, you know gentiles gentiles was a certain community uh, uh, that peter was writing to but if we consider ourselves you know we are from another nation another time uh, in uh, history uh, but then this applies to us as well you know we are a royal priesthood and that's how god sees us even though we don't have that backing of our ancestors going into the temple uh, like the you know natural jews and offering up sacrifices still in a spiritual sense you and i are royal priesthood and god sees us like that so you know it gives us so much of uh, courage and strength and he says uh, so this kind of priesthood that we have now we can offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god through jesus christ so he says look what god has done for you you know you may not be a jew but you know you are a royal priesthood and you can now offer spiritual sacrifices and that is applicable to us as believers today so i am a royal priesthood and i can offer up spiritual sacrifices and then he goes on to talk a little more about the lord jesus as that rejected cornerstone 
so he quotes from scripture uh, and he says um, you know it was said about jesus behold i lay in zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame so he is uh, bringing in a prophetic word you know from the psalms and he's saying that it was already foretold that jesus would be that main person on whom the church will be built okay on whom the kingdom will be built so cornerstone those days was uh, a part of a building on which most of the weight would fall so i don't know whether like in architecture whether they still use this concept of cornerstone i'm sure it has evolved into other other things but those days they would have one particular stone which would be the key part of a building structure and in the same way today when we uh, look at god's house his kingdom the weight is borne by the cornerstone that is the lord jesus christ and we are told when we believe in him we will by no means be put to shame uh to you who believe he is precious but to those who are disobedient so he says you know those who are part of the kingdom and you understand who he is you will recognize but how did the jews treat jesus they never understood the values you know the unbelieving jews they never understood the value of the messiah so uh, he adds here from that quotation the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone people rejected jesus but jesus became you know the main person uh, whom the kingdom is built on and then you know he says a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense so you know we recognize this isn't it uh, for the jews he was a stumbling stone because they did not expect the messiah to be the way jesus was you know they expected that he would be a political leader or a ruler and you know he will he will conquer territories that was their understanding but jesus came in a completely different way and the obedience that he expected from people was completely different he began with believe believe in me right which they were not ready to receive so he became a stumbling block for them and so they were ready to put him away okay uh, and even for the greeks we we see paul writing about this we see that the greeks wanted something very intellectual philosophical very interesting for them the fact that a man would come uh, uh you know god would come as a man and god would die for the sins of mankind you know they were looking for something more um you know intricate than that so they too were not able to receive what jesus did for us in his own way so he became a stumbling stone and a rock of offense you know, for the unbelieving people so those who don't believe they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also they also were appointed is what we are told so there are people who didn't believe and uh, they could not receive of the work which jesus did but he reminds these believers and he says come on but you understand isn't it and so i want you to recognize to who you really are just now he said that you are living stones so god is using you and me we can say that about ourselves today when we go to church we can look at all the people around and and say wow they are all living stones the kingdom is built through each one of their lives and each one of us is a royal priesthood so we no longer have to go to the temple to offer sacrifices but here we are offering up spiritual sacrifices what are our spiritual sacrifices our praise you know our giving our worship you know, things like this these are our spiritual sacrifices that we offer unto god okay uh, and 
no he continues to remind the believers you are a chosen generation now also you know think about this when we see the gentiles and them comparing themselves to the jews they would have thought oh we are not chosen like you know the people of god the jews so he's telling every believer spiritually we are on level ground what jesus has done for the jew he has also done it for the gentiles so that's why he's boldly saying things like you are a royal priesthood which for a gentile it would have been wow this is amazing now he adds to it and he says you are a chosen generation the jews thought they were chosen but here we are we can apply it to ourselves also we are a chosen generation we are a royal priesthood we are a holy nation his own special people so why has god done all this for us here is the answer so that we can proclaim the praises of this god proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so that is the intention so today you know i know all of us who are part of this class many of us who are part of the bible college here what is our goal we want to serve god we want to preach the gospel we want to lead in worship we want to serve people you know in different ways so that god is honored so that his name is praised and that's what peter is telling the believers you know god has done so much for all of us he has made us a very precious people and the outcome of that is you know our life should bring glory to god you know we are here to proclaim the praises of god and uh, that's what god expects you know from each of us so live that kind of life so see you see he's trying to build that narrative from the beginning he is saying believer you are so blessed believer god has done so much for you uh, through your life you know god is worthy of praises so you live that kind of a life uh, desire god's word let it work in you don't live a carnal life don't live a fleshly life but live a holy life and then you know he he continues um, he also says you were not once you were not a people okay but now you are a people of god so he's saying that come on you know god has done so much that even though you were not the so called nation or all that now spiritually you are god's people and that's the tag which has been given to uh, each one who believes and we have obtained mercy okay so don't ever forget everything that god has done for you so now after telling them all these truths now he says i beg you as sojourners and pilgrims so now that you are supposed to have an eternal perspective about life now let me come to the point now he starts talking about how to live the life on the earth he says abstain from fleshly lusts so knowing that you know people have come from a certain background i already explained to us now if you go back even to the book of acts the gentiles you know, uh, there was this whole contention should the gentiles also be circumcised at that time the jerusalem council they come up with uh, the suggestion or, or the instruction that no gentiles don't have to be circumcised because salvation is about believing it's not about you know doing certain works so okay fine you know believe in in christ um however there were few things which they were told the gentiles that you know they should not uh, eat the blood of strangled animals and you know, some some things like that because they had certain practices in their past life now he is telling all believers he's telling believers come on believers we may have had a particular way of living before we accepted christ but now that we are in christ jesus we have to put 
those things behind us and we have to practice a holy life we have to live a holy life before god and so for the gentiles they must have had many different practices isn't it so uh, probably you know peter knew what are those traditions what are those practices now he wanted to tell the people don't continue those things but you put it away and you practice a life which is uh, godly in your own sight and also godly when others observe you so he says abstain from fleshly lusts what are fleshly lusts you know immoral things that can be uh, sexually immoral things uh, uh, things that have to do with um, you know uh, um, uh, extremes maybe taking care of our body the the, the way we eat uh, the flesh has cravings isn't it maybe food or rest or anything that goes out of control is a lust okay so he is telling them whatever fleshly lusts we have uh, you put it away abstain is stop stop those things why because the fleshly lusts they war against the soul so if i want to have a healthy soul i must get rid of lustful things now imagine you know believers we say that uh, we want to live for god uh, we want to be whole you know spirit soul and body but when we have open doors to sin when we have open doors to lustful things in our lives we we may think that nobody knows all this is going on in the area of my mind or in private life it will not affect in any way but you see here peter warns the believers he says you cannot have lust or we cannot have lust in our lives and still have a healthy soul because what does lust do it will destroy our soul you know our mind will emotions our ability to think uh, correctly our ability to decide correctly mind will emotions our emotions right our normal healthy emotions it will begin to interfere so basically lust has a property to destroy the soul so he's warning the believer and he's saying please don't keep open doors to lustful things instead you have your behavior or your conduct honorable Okay, among the Gentiles, so he also lets the believers know that see when we are living in the world, others are watching us. They are observing us. Now maybe there are family members, no, uh, part of uh, the believer believers' life who have not accepted Christ still. But well, they will be looking at this believer and saying, "Oh, let me see how his life is going to change." He says that uh, he believes in Jesus Christ. so how different is his life from my life i want to see right so there are people who are watching you they are observing you and now that gentile believer you have come into christ your life must be honorable and same thing applies to us now that i am in christ jesus everything about my behavior my conduct it has to change i have to have a godly life and he says we should live in such a way that even when people speak against you as evil doers let them observe your good works and glorify god okay in the day of visitation so he's saying even jesus said this he said let your works your, your good works exceed that of the pharisees so our life has to match our faith if we say we have faith but we don't have a godly lifestyle then there is a clash okay and uh, peter adds here and he says people are observing so don't let god's name be put to shame we must uh, ensure that people should not be able to even find fault that's why he's saying you know uh, see it's normal that those who don't believe will accuse us then even if they try to accuse they should not be able to find anything do you remember about daniel and shadrach meshach abednego 
there are so many things that were happening at that time but you know people could not find fault with them they put them to through trial also but they couldn't find fault with them okay paul's life they he was tried isn't it he was brought and accused of so many things but ultimately they were not able to point out anything Uh, or establish any any accusation against him so what a great call you know god has for us that we should live also in such a way that nobody should be able to find fault with our conduct so we need to have an honorable uh, lifestyle is what we are being told now coming to verse 13 he is talking about submitting to submitting to authority okay so he says um, we must submit ourselves to every ordinance of man for the lord's sake so what what does he mean by this every ordinance of man is you have people who have leadership okay uh, over the land then later he explains he says king as supreme governors those who are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers and for the praise of those who do good so basically he's saying there are people in different places of authority now they are not evil because for a believer when we talk about kingdom of god and you know all that kingdom of light um, and kingdom of darkness the believer might think or let's say you are pilgrims your citizenship is in heaven the believer might think that i must disregard every form of earthly authority but that's not the point that's not the way we should live life so it's very interesting though we have to have an eternal perspective when it comes to authorities god is saying please don't disregard them or don't treat them with uh <clears throat> contempt or dishonor don't do that we must value and uh, walk in submission to these authorities because what is god's intention in having authorities you no know, there is an authority structure isn't it that god establishes the reason why god establishes authority structures is so that righteousness will prevail in the land okay so that evil is punished that is god's idea so god is the one who establishes authority structures and so we as believers you know we should never think that i belong to the eternal kingdom and so it doesn't matter whether i follow the whether i honor my my um, uh, earthly leaders here or follow the law of the land i'll break every rule because i'm a citizen of heaven you see that's a wrong interpretation on the flip side if i am a citizen of heaven i should actually be living my life in submission to the earthly authorities and honor to the earthly authorities that's how it must uh, you know come forth in our lives and he's very clearly letting the believer know that we should live an honorable life and submit to authorities and he says see this is the will of god that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men okay so uh, he says obviously there would have been people who were accusing these believers so he saying they are foolish they don't know what they are saying but when you do the right thing it's like you're making them silent you know this is the way we can uh, be loud about what god has done in us not with the words that we speak with the life that we live isn't it that we show the glory of god and that is the call upon the believers and then you know he says for the gentile believers you know they would have been um, they would have felt a sense of freedom having come into christ because you know they were not brought back into bondage with traditions and you know you have to be circumcised you have to go to the temple you have to make the sacrifices so that was not the case but what they are being taught is you have now liberty in Christ Jesus okay you can live a free life uh, you can uh, 
live for God uh, and and you know know all these spiritual things that that uh, God has done for you. But He's saying now that you know that you have this kind of a liberty, please don't make it a license to live a an ungodly life or a fleshly life because you know even today we have that happening isn't it people just misinterpret grace and they think oh grace is uh, you know the mercy and god's love and favor that i don't deserve god has already given it to me so whatever i do it's okay god is not going to uh, you know worry about that or god will not punish uh, if i do the wrong thing but you see when we talk about the lord jesus christ in John 1 verse 14, we, we said that, that, isn't it? That you know, he was full of grace and truth. We beheld his glory full of grace and truth. So that is our God. There is grace, but there is also truth. We cannot have only one. They are two sides of the coin. There is grace and truth. We have to uphold the truth. So walking in unrighteousness and uh, calling that liberty, no, will dishonor God in the world that we live in. And so here, Peter is telling the believers, please live an honorable life before men. Don't say I have freedom in Christ and do whatever you like. Uh, instead, you know, uh, all the more we should honor the people, especially authority. And then you know, he goes on to say, honor all people, love the brotherhood fear god honor the king so in our conduct in relating to authorities in relating to uh, you know brotherhood brotherhood is other believers we should we should be submissive we should be loving we should be honorable so we are kind of running out of time so uh, i think i will stop here we will come back to the next section on submitting to masters in uh, the next class so i'll pause here for a bit and if you have any thoughts that you want to uh, share or comments you can do that and then we will close with a word of prayer Okay, um, Kiran, would you like to share and then also close in prayer? Yes, ma'am, sir. Yeah. I like very much uh, the, the chapter and the books, ma'am. It's very much like godly, godliness and the um, scientification, the living life and all. And also how the God, uh, how he is the, uh, the teaches us like uh, we have to like not carn carnal mind. We have to orbit like a godly mind and all and move forward. Yeah. So, like, yeah that's great. Yes, Kiran, please go ahead. Okay. We'll pray. Father God, we come before your throne once again and we want to say thanking you, Father God, through your word and your, your, your wisdom and your revelation, Father God, that we can understand nicely, with Father God, to you, your things, Father God. Father God, reveal your more thing, Father God, reveal and give uh, your wisdom and knowledge, Father God, and lead, uh, lead us, Father God, to glory and glorious the way, Father God, we we that we can move forward in you father god we can uh work uh within you father god your kingdom work father god thanking you father god for the passion the desire what you give in us father god thanking you father god lead us father god to your kingdom work thanking you father god submitting to your hand the rest of the day thanking you father almighty jesus name we pray amen Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you, everyone, for joining. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And uh, uh, anyway, I will post the assignment this week and we will meet next uh, next Monday. Okay. So take care. God Thank bless. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Bye.